Shabbat Shalom. Today is 21st of July. It's in the Hebrew month is 9 of Av, 5778, the biblical year from the creation of the human being. Today we're going to read the portion or in Hebrew parasha number 44, the Varim, the name of this portion. It's in the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to start a book today, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to read to chapter 3, verse 22. According to the reading that is reading today in the whole world, Messianic and Jewish. That's beautiful. And we're going to do this reading and seven aliyot or seven readings according to our custom. First, aliyah. Yamot George Petty ben Abraham Abino Likroba Torah. Shabbat Shalom. These are the words spoken which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness in the plain opposite soup the, between Paran, Topel, Laban, Hezeroth, and Zezahab. It is 11 days' journey from Horb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Now it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. After he had killed Shahan, the king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, who dwelt at Asheroth in Erel, on the side of the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us in Horb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the seacoast, in the land of the Canaanites Can 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 and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. And I spoke to you at the time, saying, I alone am not able to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you. And here you are today as the stars of heaven and multitude. May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you. Aliyah number two, Yamot Mike Burns, Ben Abraham Abino Likroba Torah. How can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? Choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. And you answered me and said, the thing which you have told us to do is good. So I told the heads of your tribes, wise and knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you, leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties and leaders of tens and officers for your tribes. Then I commanded your judges at that time saying, hear the cases between your brethren and judge righteously between a man and his brother or the stranger who is among, who is with you, him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid if any man's presence in any man's presence for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, bring to me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. So he departed from Horeb and went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which you saw on the way to the mountains of the Amorites, as the Lord our God had commanded us. Then we came to Kadesh Barnea, and I said to you, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. 
Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. And every one of you came near to me and said, Let us send men before us and let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us of the way by which we should go up and of the cities into which we shall come. Okay. Excuse me. Alia number three. Yamot John McLean Ben Abraham Abinuli Krobatora. And every one of you came near to me and said, Let us send men before us and let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us of the way by which we should go and of the cities into which we shall come. The plan pleased me well, so I took twelve of your men, one man from each tribe, and they departed and went up into the mountains and came to the valley of Esco and spied it out. They also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us. And they brought back word to us, saying, It is a good land which Adonai our God is giving us. <clears throat> Nevertheless, you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of Adonai your God. And you complained in your tents and said, Because Adonai hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us unto the into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up? Or brethren, our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, the people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and the fort fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakim there. Then I said to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. Adonai, your God, who goes before you, he will fight for you. According to all he is all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes, and in the wilderness where you saw how Adonai your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until the, you came to this place. Yet for all this you would not believe Adonai your God, who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tents to show you the way you should go in the fire by night and, and in the cloud by day. And Adonai heard the sound of your words and was angry and, saw an, and took an oath, saying, Surely not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land of which I swore to give to their fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it, and to him and his children I am giving the land on which he walked, because he wholly followed Adonai. Adonai was also angry with me for your sake, saying, Even you shall not go in there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Aliyah number four. Yamot al wizin ben Abraham abinu Torah. Moreover, your little ones and your children, who you say will be victims, who today have no knowledge of good and evil, they shall go in there. To them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then you answered and said to me, We've sinned against Adonai. We will go up and fight, just as Adonai our God commanded us. And whenever one of you had girded on his weapons of war, you were ready to go up into the mountain. And Adonai said to me, Tell them, do not go up or nor fight, for I am not among you, lest you be defeated before your enemies. So I spoke to you, yet you would not listen, but rebelled against the command of Adonai, and presumptuously went up into the mountain. 
and the Amorites who dwelt in that mountain came out against you and chased you as bees and drove you back from Seir to Hormah. Then you returned and wept before Adonai, but Adonai would not listen to your voice nor give ear to you. So you remained in Kadesh many days according to the days that you spent there. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, as Adonai had spoke to me. And we skirted Mount Seir for many days. Alian number five. Yamot Randy Epperson Ben Abraham Abinu Likroba Torah. And Adonai spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward and command the people, saying, You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully. Do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as one footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You shall buy food from them with money that you may eat. And you shall also buy water from them with money that you may drink. For Adonai, your God, has blessed you in all the work of your hand. He knows you're trudging through his great wilderness these 40 years. The Adonai, your God, has been with you. You have lacked nothing. And when we passed beyond our brethren, the descendants of Esau who dwelt in Seir, away from the road of the plain, away from Elath and Izion Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Then Adonai said to me, Do not harass Moab, nor contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Amim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were regarded as giants like the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Amim. The Horites formerly dwelt in Seir, but the descendants of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their place, just as Israel did in the land of their possession, which Adonai gave them. Now rise and cross over the valley of the Zered. So we crossed over the valley of the Zered. And the time we took to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the valley of the Zered was 38 years, until all the generation of the men of war was consumed from the midst of the camp just as Adonai had sworn to them. For indeed, the hand of Adonai was against them, to destroy them from the midst of the camp until they were consumed. So it was, when all the men of war had finally perished from among the people, that Adonai spoke to me, saying, This day you are to cross over the Ar at the boundary of Moab. And when you come near the people of Ammon, do not harass them or meddle with them, for I will not give you any of the land of the people of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the descendants of Lot as a possession. That also was regarded as a land of giants. Giants formerly dwelt there. But the Ammonites called them Zazumim, a people as great and tall and numerous as the Anakim. But Adonai destroyed them before them, and they dispossessed them, and they dwelt in their place, just as he had done for the descendants of Esau, who dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They dispossessed them and dwelt in their place even to this day. And the Avim, who dwelt in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaftorim, who came from Kaftor, destroyed them and dwelt in the place. Rise, take your journey, and cross over the river Arnon. Look, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and engage him in battle. This day I will put the dread and fear of you upon the nations under the whole heaven, who shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. And I send messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to Sihon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your land. I will keep strictly to the road and I will turn neither to the right nor to the left. You shall sell me food for money that I may eat, and give me water for money that I may drink. Only let me pass through on foot, just as the descendants of Esau who dwell in Seir, and the Moabites who dwell in Ar did for me, until I crossed the Jordan to the land which Adonai our God is giving us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass through, for Adonai, your God, hardened his spirit, 
and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into your hand as it is this day. Alia number six, Iamot David Nelson Ben Abraham Abinu Likrobatora. And the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to give Sihon and his land over to you. Begin to possess it, that you may inherit his land. Then Sihon and all his people came out against us to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him over to us. So we defeated him, his sons, and all his people. We took all his cities at that time, and we utterly destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city. We left none remaining. We took only the livestock as plunder for ourselves, with the spoil of the cities which we took. From Aror, which is on the bank of the river Armon, and from the city that is in the, the ravine as far as Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all to us. Only you did not only you did not go near the land of the people of Ammon, anywhere along the river Jabbok, or to the cities of the mountains, or wherever the Lord our God had forbidden us. Then we turned and went up the road to Bashan, and Og, king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Adrei. And the Lord said to me, Do not fear him, for I have delivered him and all his people and his land into your hand. So you'll do, you shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon. So the Lord God also delivered into our hands Og, king of Bashan, with all his people, and we attacked him until he had no surviving survivors remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we did not take from them. Sixty cities, all the region of Argob, the, king, the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls, gates, and bars, besides a great many rural towns. And we utterly destroyed them, as we did to Sihon, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, children of every city. But all the livestock and the spoil of the cities we took as booty for ourselves. And at, a time, and at that time, we took the land from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites who were, who were on his side, who were on this side of the Jordan from the river Arnon to Mount Hermon. The Sidonians call Hermon Sirion, and the Amorites call it Sinir. All the cities of the plain, all Gilead and all Bashan, as far as Salka and Edrei, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Indeed, his bedsides were an iron, his bedside was an iron bedstead. Is it, is it not in Rabbah of the people of Ammon? Nine cubits is its length and four cubits its width according to the standard cubit. And this land which we possess at that time from Aror, which is by the river Arnon, and half of the mountains of Gilead and its cities, I gave to the Reubenites and to the Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to half the tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob, with all Bashan. With all Bashan was called the land of the giants. Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the region of Argob as far as the border of the Gesherites and the Machathites and called Bashan after his own name, Havoth Jair, to this day. Alia number seven, Yamot Tony de Biase, Ben Abraham Abino, Likroba Torah.
Also, I gave Gilead to Mashir and to the Reubenites and to the Gideites, I gave them Gilead as far as the river Arnon, the middle of the river as a border, as far as the river Jabuk, the, the border of the people of Amman. The plain also, with the Jordan on the border, from the Sinari, as far as the east side of the Sea of the uh, Arabah, the Salt Sea, below the s slopes of Pisgah. Then I commanded you at that time, saying, Adonai your God has given you this land to possess. All your, you men of valor shall cross over armed before your brethren, the children of Israel. But your wives, your little ones, and your livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall stay in your cities which I have given you until Adonai has given the rest of your brethren as to you, and they also possess the land which Adonai, gave, your God, is giving them beyond the Jordan. And each of you may return to his possession, which I have given you. And I commanded Joshua at this time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that Adonai, your God, has done to these two kings. So will the Adonai do to all the kingdoms though which you pass. You must not fear them, for Adonai your God himself fights for you. That's it. Reader of the Maftir, Yamot Chris Lemon, Ben Abraham Abino, Likroba Torah. Until the Lord has given rest to your brethren as to you, and they also possess the land which the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan, then each of you may return to his possession which I have given you. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. So will the Lord do to all the kingdoms through which you pass. You must not fear them, for the Lord your God himself fights for you. Then I pleaded with the Lord... At that time. Okay. Reino de Aftara. Baruchata donai loenu melechaulam, asher bacharbin bin tovin, beratsabe di berchen hane marit behemet. Baruchata donai abocher batora, ub moshe abdo, ub israel amo, ub imbien heme betzedek. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who chose good prophets and was pleased with their words which they spoke in truth. Blessed are you, Adonai who chose the Torah, Moses his servant, Israel his people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know my people do not consider. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with inequity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors, for they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. Why should you be stricken again? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed or bound up or soothed with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Strangers devour your land in your presence and... It is desolate, as overthrown by strangers, so the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in the garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless the Lord of hosts 
had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom, and we would have been made like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of the, our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, he, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity and the sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. How the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice, righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers, your silver has become dross, your wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebellious and com companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Therefore the Lord says, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will rid myself of my adversaries. I will take vengeance on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your alloy. I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with justice and her penitence with righteousness. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. Reading of the Apostolic Scriptures. Yamot Dona Geiger, but Sarai Menonikroba Brita Dasha. This reading that we just read of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 1, starts the vision of Isaiah. In Hebrew, is Chazon. That's why this Shabbat, the name of this Shabbat today is Shabbat Chazon, the Shabbat of the vision. Baruch ata Adonai loenu melech haolam, asher natan lanu et divrech hamashiach Yeshua, be divrech hashalechif, Baruch ata Adonai noten et divrech hamashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given to us the words of Messiah Yeshua and the words of his apostles. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the words of Messiah Yeshua. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Messiah's gift. 
Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave to some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Messiah, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect or complete man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Messiah, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Messiah, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effectual working by which every part does its share, causing the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Messiah, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yeshua, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Messiah forgave you. Well, the Parsha reading for uh, this week, Parsha uh, Devarim, is uh, normally read before the ninth day of the month of Av. Uh, of course, as you know, this date, the ninth of Av, on the uh, lunar calendar, uh, recognizes the many tragedies uh, throughout Jewish history. Traditionally, it's when the people of Israel rejected the report of the 12 spies, uh, the destruction of the first temple, the destruction of the second temple, and the list goes on and on. Uh, the ninth uh, is called the uh, fast of Av, uh, fasting from sundown to sundown. Now this year it begins, actually it is today, but because 
Today is Shabbat. It's put off a day. So we'll begin tonight at sundown, fast through tomorrow until sundown. I encourage you to do this. I encourage you to uh, observe this uh, ninth of Av. Now, the uh, also encourage you to read the book of uh, Lamentations. Uh, this is traditionally read uh, on this day. A Devarim is called the second uh, law, or the giving of the second law, because it goes back over the statutes and ordinances. Only this time, it is uh, 40 years later, it's given to a new generation, and we've come to the end of a long journey through the wilderness. The old generation has died out. The new generation is about to go over to possess the land. Tradition says that Moses spoke these words over the course of five weeks. Consider it the longest sermon you have ever heard. Uh, it's Moses' farewell message. It's goodbye message to, to Israel. Uh, the word devarim means words. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, which says, these are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness. We know that Moses is the speaker because in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 42, and chapter 2, verse 9, and chapter 3, verse 2, Moses says, Adonai spoke to me. Throughout the first four books of the Torah, it says, Adonai spoke to Moses. Uh, Moses chose the words uh, and spoke as the Spirit moved him along. The Spirit uses the uniqueness of the human speaker. His learning, his personality, his time in which he ministered. All are interwoven into what we have as the written scriptures. We could say in one sense that this is Moses' understanding of all that has transpired in the last 40 years. Now, for us today, I, I think it's important to when we read, for example, the apostolic scriptures. When we read the life and uh, teachings of Yeshua in the uh, gospel accounts, that we try to put ourselves back into that day in which he lived, in which he taught, in which he gave his life a ransom for us, that day, rather than trying to interpret that day with what we do today. We have to, in a sense, release ourselves from the way we do things today to put ourselves back into that day. Well, anyway, the sages understood something in the choice of the words here. Moses chooses the word devarim and devar, uh, which means words, and devar means spoke, instead of the more common word amar, so that he would imply, as he spoke the words, uh, imply words of rebuke. Uh, traditionally, his thinking went like this. If 
the people could sin when they were surrounded by miracles, surely they would be in greater danger without constant reminders of God's presence. Uh, but in order not to embarrass or to offend his listeners, he alluded to their sins by using places, uh, place names and other veiled references to their past history. I, I think this brings up an important principle of the believer's life. Uh, we often stumble around in our walk and become distracted in our walk with God by not understanding this principle. Okay, you ready to write? <laughs> okay. We study the words of God to understand the ways of God in order to understand the will of God in our walk with God. You got that down? No. <laughs> we, we, we study the words of God to understand the what? The ways of God. That's important. Uh, it shows maturity when we understand the ways of God. In order to stand, understand the will of God for our walk with God. Before we state the principle, let's uh, listen to the words of the sages once more. If the people could sin when they were surrounded by miracles, surely they would be in greater danger without constant reminders of God's presence. Why, why doesn't God continue to surround them with constant miracles? This is a new generation, right? But why does God withhold the miracles now that there is a new generation and they're about to do the hard part of actually possessing the land? Uh, it, it seems like now is the time to be encouraging the new generation by those same miracles. Why does God miraculously overthrow Jericho but require the people to fight for the land from then on? Why is it that God uses this tactic here, that strategy there? Why is God changing, constantly changing the way in which he works with us? Oh, we could bring it a little closer and say, why is God constantly changing the way and works in, in the way he works with you? He seems so close to us. And, and then it is as if he withdraws himself from us. It is as if he hides from us and we play this game of hide and seek. Take, for example, someone comes to the Lord through a vision of the Messiah, like Shaul, the Apostle Paul. Many fumble around waiting for another vision from God or, or waiting around for some experience that they have had in the past. Um, this is uh, beautifully brought out in verse 6, which says, Adonai, our God, spoke to us in Horeb, saying, Enough uh, of your dwelling by this mountain. Uh, Rav Lachem means enough for you. <laughs> I love the Greek. I love the, uh, the Hebrew. I love the original Hebrew here. I understand Rav Lachem is used three times in this book of Devarim. That's an interesting study. I commend that to you. Rav Lachem, enough for you. Move on. Israel wanted to camp out there 
where all of the powerful experiences of God had taken place, one year later was enough as God made it very plain. Enough of this. Move on. Uh, an experience itself can become our focus. And in focusing on an experience, we might, in a sense, lose our way. When that experience is over, we want to repeat performance. If we're not lulled into a deep rut in life, we camp out, waiting for some feeling that God is with us or we seek for some new revelation, some new experience, some new teaching when the Lord has sort of withdrawn the sense of his presence in order for us to exercise a deeper walk of faith. Uh, we go through a physical issue and we wait and wait for him to heal us in the same way that he did 20 years ago because he answered your prayer and, and took it all away at that time. Now you seem to struggle with another physical issue and it is strangely different. This time around, not left us alone. He has not left us alone. So what changes? What changes does he want to incorporate into your life this time around? I don't think we should be shy in asking God, what is it you want at this time? But this time it seems to be much harder. It is. Where is he when I need him the most? Repeat experiences sometimes indicate that we didn't catch on the first time around. Or repeat experiences sometimes indicate that he desires for us to move in closer to him. Draw closer to him. Keeping the truths that you know clearly in your mind, truths like the eternal God is sovereign, right? Sovereign over his creation. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. Never. Uh, that's a triple negative in that verse, by the way. He loves you with an everlasting love. He desires with strong, powerful desire to have intimate relationship or fellowship with you and desires for you to fulfill his purpose. And as we have these things constantly in our minds, it will help, uh, help you to stay calm in the midst of the storm and to take the next step forward along your journey, in your journey. Paul asked two questions when he encountered Yeshua. Who are you, Lord? And Lord, what do you want me to do? Uh, when the Lord spoke to Ananias, Ananias said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord says, I want you to go to straight street to Judas's house and lay hands on Saul of Tarsus in order for his sight to be restored. I can understand Ananias' words, but I've heard a lot of things about this guy, and they're not good. And I can understand the Lord saying, just go. 
because he is a chosen vessel. A chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. What did Ananias say? Okay, Lord. And off went Ananias. Who are you, Lord? That I may know you. What is it, Lord, you want me to do? These are two questions that we continue to ask along our journey. If the people could sin when they were surrounded by miracles, surely there would be in greater danger without constant reminders of God's presence. See, there are greater dangers as we journey along in the life of obedience, in the life of faith. However, the Lord is the sovereign one who works in marvelous and profound ways that require us to search more diligently for him. I really believe that God desires you to know him. I honestly uh, believe that God, God desires that you feel his presence, that you experience what is true rather than simply know what is true. Your life is to be drawn to the focus of your journey, Yeshua himself. To know him, to walk with him. For he said, if you know me, you will know my father also. Although we look forward to the life in the Olam Haba, the coming age, when we will see his face, His name will be upon our foreheads. Yet now we hunger and thirst after Him. Now we seek after Him in this world to know Him more and more deeply. It is important to interpret these experiences in our lives in the light of His love and then the light of our relationship with him. The word uh, covenant is used 27 times in Deuteronomy as a key concept in the book. Briefly, a, a covenant is a contract that defines a relationship detailing the conditions and obligations of both parties. Can I repeat that a minute? Uh, Just for a moment. Uh, A covenant is a contract that defines a relationship. And in that covenant, it details the conditions and obligations that God has and you have. The word love is ahav or ahava. Uh, Some have seen that this book speaks of God's love for Israel seven times. It commands Israel to love God 11 times. And we know in our heads that love is the dynamic of true and meaningful relationships. Love is that dynamic of true and meaningful relationships. Love is the dynamic of a true and meaningful relationship with God. 
For God loves his people with the eternal, unfathomable, I think I pronounced that right? Unbelievable. Pure love. And he commands us to press in with our own shortcomings and stumbling love to know him more deeply and to become more like him so that we can love him more purely. It's a journey. It's a journey. Many of us have heard someone say in our past, the God of the Old Testament is a God of wrath, but the God of the New Testament is a God of love. No. Besides Ahav, the word kesed speaks of this pure covenant love of our Heavenly Father. The loving kindness. The loving faithfulness. The pure love that reaches down to touch you. To fill you. To encourage you. To sustain you along the way. Used 21 times in the Tanakh. Uh, this is the love of our Messiah who loves us right on through to the end. And not only to the end, but through the end into the Olam Haba, the life to come. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I do not have love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. By prophecies, I know all mysteries. I have knowledge of all things. If I have all faith, so as to move mountains, but do not have love, what does it say? I'm nothing. I am nothing. If I give out all my goods, if I deliver my body, that it be burned, but do not have love. I've not profited anything yet. A love has uh, patience. Love is kind. Love is not envious. Love is not vain, not puffed up. Love does not behave indecently. Love does not pursue its own thing. Love is not easily provoked. Love does not think evil. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. But love rejoices in truth. Love quietly covers all things. Believes all things, hopes all things, endureth all things. Love never fails. But if there are prophecies, they will be cease to uh, cause to cease. If tongues, they shall cease. If knowledge, it will be caused to cease. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect thing is come, then that which is in part will be will be caused to cease. When I was an infant, I spoke spoke as an infant. Uh, when I uh, I thought as an infant, I reasoned as an infant, but when I became a man, but when I became a woman, I caused to cease the things of the infant. For now we see through a mirror in dimness, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will fully know even as I was fully known. And now faith, hope, and love, these three things remain, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 8.1, but concerning the sacrifices to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. 
knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. But if anyone thinks to know anything, he still has known nothing as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he has been known by him. Knowledge should humble you. And when combined with love is a powerful force working in you. 1 Peter 4.8 says, And above all things, having fervent love to one another, because love will cover a multitude of sins. This word fervent comes from the word meaning to stretch out, to be intentional in your loving without ceasing, fervent. For you see, love is the central dynamic of community. It is that which separates communities from communities and makes them different. We love when we are patient with each other. We love when we're not envious of each other. We love when we're not proud. We love when we behave and speak with decency to each other. We love when we are not pursuing our own thing. We love when we are not provoked. We love when we don't think evil. This is when love is real. Love covers, quietly covers all offenses. Love behave, believes all things, hopes in all things, endures all things. This is the real thing. And we need these inscribed upon the walls to remind us how to behave as a community, or better yet, inscribed upon our hearts to remind us how to be godlike. We must be known for this love. We need to be characterized by this love. And God to take care of the rest. A loving community. This is what makes us real. Don't take advantage of God's love. Respond in kind to God's love.